going to get on to oil prices and inflationary pressures in just a moment. But let's talk about trade. You have this, are we in a trade war? Are we not? Uh, the rhetoric is really ramping up between the US and China. How difficult does that make it for you to make investment decisions and to, to do your business? Sure. Well, we're a very big cargo carrier, as you probably know. We have, in addition to our wide-bodied fleet, which can carry a lot of cargo in the bellies, we have 20 freighters and Hong Kong is the largest cargo hub in the world. So clearly, you know, the movement of, of cargo is very important. Having said that, uh, a lot of the rhetoric at the moment has been around aluminium and steel, and most of the stuff that travels by air is really consumer goods, uh, and is, is actually a sort of barometer in some respects of consumer sentiment. And we haven't really seen a slowdown in volume, uh, and, the, and the cargo markets have been quite strong so far. The other thing I think that's pertinent, or two more things really, to, to cargo. One is that clearly there's a lot more online shopping and that drives small parcel movements. And so the sort of base load building up in the industry that perhaps hasn't been there before. And uh, we see more inbound cargo as, as uh, China sort of shifts to becoming more of a consumer-driven e economy. We see a sort of benefit coming there. So trade war would be bad, no doubt about that. Uh, and the rhetoric doesn't help. But at the moment, we don't see it coming through in the actual volumes of cargo. Yeah, it's really if it broadens to beyond the, t the targeted tariffs that are being talked about, right? Correct. That's right. When you take a look at the recovery in cargo globally for, for carriers, it's been pretty extraordinary over the past year or so. Yeah. Is that sustainable? Yes, I, I think it, it is sustainable for the reasons that I talked about. I, mean, I think there are some structural shifts in, in the market and online shopping and, and this movement of small parcels and goods and things is definitely driving, driving volume. And, and generally speaking, notwithstanding what we're talking about in terms of the trade wars, the world economy is relatively benign and, and so you know, consumer sentiment has been quite strong. Let's see whether that continues. Yeah. All of this feeding into uh, your ambitious turnaround plan, how's yes. that going? I mean, how would you characterise where you're at? And are you, you've already yes. cut some jobs. Uh, are you planning to cut more jobs this year? Well, we said a year ago that, uh, you know, in the face of the, the really, I mean, the main driver for us uh, to start the transformation program was an acknowledgement that there was a big structural change in the competitive market in which we find ourselves. And although the markets are growing very strong, I think they're talking about 150 million international uh, tourists from, from China alone this year, uh, capacity has been growing faster than that. So there's been a lot of competition for the business that's out there, and that's had a big impact on, on fares. And so from a passenger revenue perspective, we were in our third year of negative growth last year. So we said we need to transform the business, we need to make ourselves more agile, fleeter of foot, uh, and we slimmed ourselves down in, in Hong Kong uh, at that time. Now we're over a year in, in the first year we're on track, we did what we said we would do, which is keep our unit costs without fuel flat. Uh, and some of the trends in the second half of the year were more positive. So yield started to improve in the last quarter of last year. Cargo revenue was very strong. Again, because the environment's been relatively benign, business travel has been quite strong. Uh, and cargo, as I say, has been strong. Rupert, I, I want to get an idea of what you mean by this program. And when... What, what, what will a right-sized Cathay Pacific look like in just terms of size? That's my first part of my question. I'll come to the second part when you answer it. Yeah. So, Rich, in terms of size, I mean, we, we see, you know, the, the, the future, the long-term future uh, of travel uh, is very strong, and particularly where we sit. I mean, I think Hong Kong is the largest international hub, as you know, in Asia, the third largest in the world. The demand is, is strong, as I've just outlined. Uh, and we're uniquely well placed because we can get uh, to both coasts of, of, of the US non-stop. And of course, we're well positioned for Southwest Pacific and Europe as well. So we intend to keep growing. We've taken delivery of 22 new aircraft in the last two years. We've launched nine new destinations this year five long haul. In the last decade, we did 10 long haul destinations. So you can see the pace uh, at which we're growing. Three new points in Europe. We're launching Washington in September, and we're going to do a, a seasonal service to, uh, to Cape Town this winter. 
looking forward, we've got a new aircraft coming one a month now until the third runway opens in late 2024 in Hong Kong. And that, of course, again, gives us great opportunity for expansion. And the final point I'd make, Rich, in terms of growth is that not only is Hong Kong a great hub, but it's also a great gateway. Uh, and increasingly, the airport's becoming a multimodal hub. Uh, and we've got upstream services, check-in at check out pier, um, and, and, and really the, the big opportunity, I think, is increased connectivity with the Greater Bay Area. And, and that has a population the same size as, as the UK and a GDP bigger than the Bay Area in San Francisco. So lots of potential, uh, and we've got a measured growth plan based on ultra-modern aircraft. Absolutely, Rupert. That, that gives me a sense of where you're going because you've got uh, Chinese carriers which are snapping your heels and people perhaps not trans transferring through Hong Kong like as they used to. So are you moving away from hub and spoke, if you will, more towards point to point now? Is that how the structure of the airline has to change? Because the structure of Hong Kong as a hub is changing. Well, I think there's a great tendency for people to see this as a, as a zero-sum game. And actually, the growth rates uh, in aviation are, are big. You know, so depending on which forecast you look at, they're looking between now and 2030 at 2.5 billion more uh, passenger sectors a year. And the nexus of aviation seems to be heading towards Asia. For Hong Kong itself, as I say, it's, a, it's the biggest hub in Asia by, by some measure. It's a very well-balanced hub in terms of you know, the, the different routes balancing and complementing each other and supporting each other. We serve 105 uh, points non-stop already. Uh, we'll keep, keep joining new points to Hong Kong. Uh, and I think the demand will, you know, will support that growth. So, no, in short, you won't see us doing anything other than building the Hong Kong hub because we think the demand merits it and, and it's already very strong. Uh, we had IATA earlier today releasing their renewed forecast for 2018 based on 70 not $60 uh, rent. How yes. well are you hedged? So our hedging position uh, this year where 45% of our consumption covered at about $80 a barrel Brent. So, you know, we don't get the advantage uh, of, a, of a lower weighted average cost of fuel, that's true. Uh, but we haven't suffered perhaps the same uh, losses that we have in previous years uh, if it continues at that. But I think the most important thing about fuel is I talked about the new aircraft we've got coming. But these are super efficient when it comes to consumption, emission, and actually noise reduction as well. Uh, so we've got 22 coming one a month up until 2024. So the net result of that is that our fuel consumption is growing more slowly than the speed at which we're growing the airline seat kilometres. So that is the best thing that we can do both environmentally and long term to secure a sort of sustainable... Very quickly, future. two questions. Are you comfortable with your hedging position at the moment and also do you see falling yields, that turning around? Uh, Alexandre de Junia flat out told me no yesterday. Sure. So we've changed our hedging policy going forward. I'm comfortable with where we're at. In terms of yields, I think there will always be pressure on, on yields and there is you know, no silver bullet there. We just have to make sure that we are continuously more and more productive. Uh, and, and at the same time, we're finding new sources of revenue, new destinations and making Cathay Pacific the airline of choice for, for that market that's growing that I was talking about.